In this video, I will provide you with an example of how you can build a porch roof with a gable end on this side. This is six foot by six foot. And I'm gonna do something a little different. This isn't a real common method. Uh, I don't see it used a lot, but it can actually provide you with something that could be a lot less work and uh, something that uh, you won't have to do a lot of structural repairs to your house. So what we're going to do is raise the porch this time. And I'm going to make other examples. I, put, I will put a playlist together when they are done and link them to the video here, either in the back or in the, in the video description page. But here you can see where the gable roof porch goes up a little higher. It sits on top of the house. It's really not sitting on top of the roof. It's still sitting on top of the beams here. A portion of it will be, a small portion of it will be sitting on top of the roof. But this way here, you can keep your original fascia board. And again, if you don't like the design, don't do this. I'm just kind of thinking out loud here with something. And you can see we got two four by six beams with a two by four rafter tie. You can see right here is where the rafters are going to go. A couple of, um, post to beam connectors and of course this is simply going to sit the beams are going to sit on top of the wall framing now sometimes when we do a porch like this we have the um, beams here the supporting beams a little lower and we notch them around the framing plates or we um, butt them up against the wall and use some type of a hanger support or, um, you know, we're, or, or we're still ending up notching the wall framing plates out for the beam. So, and again, I'll have more examples of that in other, in a future video. So here, just sitting on top of the wall framing plates. We don't need to um, remove all of the blocking. I just removed them here for viewing purposes to make sure that you could see how the beams were sitting on top of the wall framing plates. Now, something else I need to point out here is that you might need a larger header. You can see here where I put a four by four support post underneath the wall or in the wall framing, but underneath the post. And over here, I put a couple of more two by fours, just nailed two two by fours together right here to help support the weight or distribute the weight from the um, porch beam down. So you might actually, if you have a four by four header, you might need to make make it a four by six. And again, I'm just speculating here. Obviously, if you have a um, you know 12 foot opening here, and this is going to be in the middle of the opening, and you have a four by ten um, header or something like that, you know, you might need a six by ten. I'm I'm just throwing that out there. Be aware of that when you are building your porch. Be aware of what the beam, what the roof beam is actually going to be sitting on and how the load is going to be distributed through the wall framing down to the foundation. Now let's go ahead and pan away here, get a different view. We can see here how the post and the beams, everything is connecting together. This is going to be the core load bearing structure of our roof. And our plywood here, you're not going to need to remove your plywood. I say this you might not need to. You might not need to remove all of it. It all depends on how you're going to be attaching the beam to the wall framing. So in this example here, you could cut an opening to where you can slide the beam um, through it, but how are you going to attach it on the other side? If that's going to be a problem, you might need to remove some of the wall sheathing. Let's go ahead and throw our roof rafters in there. We have two by six with a two by eight ridge and our fill area our blocks two by six and your rafters might need to be smaller or larger depending upon your project. Remember, this is not structural engineering. Um, I cannot tell everybody what size lumber to use on your project. Just kind of throwing something out there with some materials that might work for your project. If you have areas, you live in an area where it snows, these might need to be two by 10 for all I, for all I know. Now we are going to need two um, rafter ties. I think I just had one in there originally, but I realized that I'm going to need another one. Four foot on center is usually the code. And uh, unless you're going to use it somehow, if you're going to build a wall on top of this, 
um, to um, put some siding on or something like that, then um, you might be able to get away with that. You might not need a rafter tie in there. Throwing out another view there. And the fascia board. Nice mitered cut there. Everything looks nicer on the computer. I shouldn't say everything. I'm sure there are skilled craftsmen out there that can make it look even nicer. Um, I This is usually an inch to an inch and a half. This is allowed. This space here is so that you can run your roofing materials under it. So you might not need as much room for composition shingles. Maybe you only need a half inch. For tile, you might need two or three inches. That will all depend upon the roof. Usually in a situation like this, the roofing material goes underneath this section and then this stuff here goes on top so that all the water will transfer down and won't be a problem. No roof leaks. We don't want that. And you can see here what it looks like with the roof sheathing. Nice and tight here. The sheathing will nail into this nailer here and uh, probably finish something like this. And that, my friends, is the end of this video. So just throwing out a way to do this. Not going to work for everyone. But uh, if you enjoy the video, you learn something, make sure that you hit the thumbs up button or leave a comment in the comment area and let us know how much you like the video.